and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Peace be with you. My brothers and sisters, we gather on this Wednesday of Holy Week to celebrate our, litur our liturgy today. And as we do so, our intention, our mass intention for today, are all of the essential workers, all those who by their labor enable us to actually manage during these days of lockdown and curfew and social distancing. We think in terms of all those who are members of the uniform branches, uh, the police, the defense force, customs, immigration, all those. We think also of the food store workers. We think of the pharmacists and pharmacy workers. We think of the gas station workers. We think of all those who work in the utilities, whether it be uh, electricity, water, telephone, and cable. We think also of the people who work in the media. Our mass intention today is for them. We put ourselves in the divine presence and we ask the Lord once again to keep us mindful that in his presence we are but sinners. But still, we rely on his mercy and his pardon. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fall, through my fall, through my most grievous fall. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary and the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who willed your Son to submit for our sake to the yoke of the cross, so that you might drive from us the power of the enemy, grant us, your servants, to attain the grace of the resurrection through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and, pit and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. He is near who upholds my right. If anyone wishes to oppose me, let us appear together. Who disputes my right? Let him confront me. See, the Lord God is my help. Who will, who will prove me wrong? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our antiphon for the responsorial psalm. Lord, in your great love, answer me. Lord, in your great love, answer me. For your sake, I bear insult, and shame covers my face. I have become an outcast to my brothers, a stranger to my mother's sons, because zeal for your house consumes me, and the insults of those who blaspheme you fall upon me. Lord, in your great love, answer me. Insult has broken my heart, and I am weak. I look for sympathy, but there is none. For consolers, not one could I find. Rather, they put gall in my food, and in my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink. Lord, in your great love, answer me. I will praise the name of God in song, and I will glorify him with thanksgiving. See, you lowly ones, and be glad. You who seek God, may your hearts revive. For the Lord hears the poor, and his own who are in bonds, he spurns not. Lord, in your great love, answer me. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Hail to you, our King, you alone are compassionate with our errors. 
glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. One of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What are you willing to give me if I hand him over to you? They paid him thirty pieces of silver, and from that time on, he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples approached Jesus and said, Where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and tell him, The teacher says, My appointed time draws near. In your house I shall celebrate the Passover with my disciples. The disciples then did as Jesus had ordered and prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he reclined at table with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me. Deeply distressed at this, they began to say to him, one after the other, Surely it is not I, Lord. He said in reply, He who has dipped his hand into the dish with me is the one who will betray me. The Son of Man indeed goes, as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. Then Jesus, his betrayer, said in reply, Surely it is not I, Rabbi. He answered, You have said so. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, we celebrate our Mass on this, the Wednesday, of Holy Week. And as we do so, the readings before us should certainly seem very familiar to us. The servant song from Isaiah and the story from the Gospel of Matthew, they really have been lifted directly from our Gospel of this past Sunday. And the theme very much is the passion. The psalm, though, is different. But its theme is very much the same. It's a psalm of lament. And all these readings are intended to focus us on what's about to happen now. What's about to happen now is for us to pass through the celebration of the Passion and Resurrection of the Lord once again. The Gospel today begins with the words, One of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priest and said, What are you willing to give me if I hand him over to you? They paid him 30 pieces of silver, and from that time on he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. That act of treachery and betrayal is indeed very deep and at the core of the pain of the passion of the Lord. Because of it, this day, the Wednesday of Holy Week, Holy Wednesday really, has been given the unofficial name sometimes of Spy Wednesday because Judas had in fact now already in his heart betrayed the Lord. He had become a spy for the chief priests and indeed had turned his back on Jesus. Why? One of the modern interpretations in drama presents it as though Judas was disappointed that Jesus was not the kind of Messiah he had hoped for. And as a result, he changed his mind about Jesus. Whatever the case may be, the point is that Judas, the evil one, had entered his heart and he betrayed the Lord. And that betrayal is part of the pain of the passion which the Lord must bear. Now, my dear friends, today, Wednesday of Holy Week, this Mass that we're celebrating now is the last Mass of the season of Lent. The next Mass we'll celebrate is the Mass of the Lord's Supper on Holy Thursday. That's tomorrow. That's the beginning of the Easter Triduum. We certainly will go through the Passion again, but that's the start of the actual three-part celebration of the Paschal Mystery, which, which Easter is all about. And that means now that our schedule will change. 
tomorrow morning we will not have a 9 a.m. Mass. What we will have is the Mass of the Lord's Supper tomorrow evening at 8 p.m. So our schedule is a little bit different, and I have issued an additional schedule for all those who would like to watch the liturgies on the TV, and they can see the liturgies from Rome with the Holy Father, or from the Shrine of the Immaculate Conception in Washington, D.C. So there are a number of options available to us, but certainly tomorrow at 8 p.m. I will be here to celebrate the Mass of the Lord's Supper. This really is our last liturgy of Lent. This is the last time during this Lent that you will see the color purple being worn. The color for tomorrow will be white. For Friday, it will be red for the Passion. And then, of course, for Easter and the rest of the Easter season, the color will be white once again. Our intention today, as I mentioned at the start, is for all those essential workers who, by their labors and sometimes the sacrifice, are now making it possible for the rest of us to make it through during these days of lockdown, these days of curfew, these days of social distancing. As I said before, you think of all the uniform branches who serve us, the police, the defense force, customs, immigration, all the others. We think too of the food store workers. We think of the pharmacists and pharmacy workers. We think of all those at the gas stations we think also of utility workers, those who work at the electricity, the, the power plant, the water, telephone, the cable. We think, too, of the media. All those essential workers who, by their efforts, who, by their sacrifices, by their work, continue to make our life possible at this time. For all of them now, we offer our prayers to the Lord. Good and gracious God, we put our needs before you this day as we pray. We pray in a special way for those whose intentions we hold so dear today, all of our essential workers. Lord, grant them always a sense of hope and courage and deepen their sense of service as they seek to ensure that the life of our community continues in a humane and decent and sustainable way. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We again turn to you, Lord, and we pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, that he may continue to lead us after the manner of the Good Shepherd, with courage and compassion through these challenging times, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray also for our civic leaders, our national leaders, our Prime Minister and Cabinet, all those now who must exercise wisdom and compassion as they seek to guide us with a steady hand through this very, very difficult time. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all our citizens that we may exercise the required behavior needed to ensure our safety as we seek constantly to lessen, <coughs> lessen the spread of this COVID-19 among us. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And let us now, in silence, place our own personal needs before the Lord this day. For all these things, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, hear our prayers and grant the needs of all your people. Keep us hopeful, keep us without fear. Protect us at this time. Protect in a special way those who are our essential workers. We ask these things through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It'll become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It'll become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, the offerings made here, and graciously grant that celebrating your Son's passion in mystery, we may experience the grace of its effect through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. 
Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For the days of his saving passion and glorious resurrection are approaching, by which the pride of the ancient foe is vanquished, and the mystery of our redemption in Christ is celebrated. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exalted praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, with me, your unworthy servant, and with all the clergy, and with all your faithful people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. Remember in a special way all those among us who have been victims of COVID-19. Remember all those who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter my room, but only say the word, and my soul shall be. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. Amen. In a 
blood of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. Amen. We now pray our act of spiritual communion, since by this physical distance we are unable to physically participate in the Eucharist. My Jesus, I believe that you were really present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I hunger to receive you. Since I cannot receive communion at this moment, feed my soul at least spiritually. I unite myself wholly to you now, as I do when I actually receive you. Permit me never to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. Endow us, almighty God, with the firm conviction that through your Son's death and time to which the revered mystery bears witness, we may be assured of perpetual life through Christ our Lord. Amen. Again, my dear friends, tomorrow we will have a different schedule. We will celebrate the Mass of the Lord's Supper beginning at 8 p.m. Please consult our Facebook page and our website for the schedules which will indicate to you the times of Mass that I will celebrate, but also if you wish to join the Holy Father celebrating his liturgies in Rome, which is certainly uh, commendable, or if you have an opportunity and you would like to celebrate the liturgy, uh, witness the liturgy celebrated at the Basilica out of Washington, D.C., all those are scheduled in. It's all on TV on our Catholic channel, EWTN. Just remember, since you are unable to participate in the Eucharist physically, please, at the time of the Eucharist, whichever particular liturgy you celebrate in, by whatever media platform, remember, during the Eucharist, to go ahead and make your prayer spiritual communion. So for all those, I look forward to seeing you at 8 p.m. tomorrow. Not, not 9 a.m. in the morning as now, but 8 p.m. tomorrow for the beginning of the celebration of the Easter Triduum. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The name of the Lord be, uh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Now and forever. The name of the Lord be blessed. Now and forever. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.